This morning I'm going to preach. Drop it a bit. I'm going to preach a sermon or teach a sermon that will help you prepare for 40 days of power. And I pray that it blesses you and enlightens you on the subject of prayer. I started teaching on this subject from Tuesday. And one thing I told them is that I hardly teach on prayer. It's, it's something I sound man, too much echo. It's something I enjoy doing and teaching, but you realize that as a pastor, one of the critical things a believer is expected to do is to pray. So once in a while, you have to teach on prayer so that people don't get so many misconceptions about prayer. Because every now and then, one or two people try to touch on the subject of prayer. And uh, sometimes it can get confusing because you will not know how to then pray. But there is a way a man, a Christian must pray. I still hear echo, sound man. Do something for me so that I can teach comfortably. Amen. There, there is a way God expects us to pray. And we have to learn how to pray. So on Tuesday, probably I've started teaching. Father, we thank you for your word. Lift your right hand and speak the language of the spirit. Just speak the language. I always want you to speak the language so that you will move from the natural to the supernatural. Pray. Katala baba shada la bahaya. Zege dege basota le bahaya. Shada la baha shate le bakata ba. Le braka sote le mahates. Kele maha so pelen keseta. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. So on Tuesday, I told them that you don't learn how to pray by praying. You don't learn how to drive a car by driving a car. You will die. You don't learn how to fly a jet by going to fly the jet. You must know how to pray. And you must know how to fly a jet. You must know how to drive before you sit behind the steering wheel. You don't learn how to connect electric wires by connecting electric wires. You must know what point you should connect what. Else, in your connection, what will happen? You'll kill yourself. So, prayer is something that must be taught, must be caught, and must be learned. There is a dimension of prayer that is taught. There is a dimension of prayer that is caught. So, the Bible said that when Saul left the presence of Samuel, he entered into the company of prophets and he began to pray or he began to prophesy. You can call it prayer, but you can call it prophecy, but every prophecy is a kind of prayer. So when he entered into the company of prophets, he, be, he caught a dimension of prayer. So prayer is taught. Prayer is caught. So the company you keep will determine the level or the kind of prayer you pray. Are you here? If you are in the, an orthodox church, you will pray, you will believe that the best way to pray is praying in an orthodox manner. When you are in a charismatic church, you will also believe that the best way to pray is to pray in a charismatic manner. So if you are a Muslim also, you will believe that the way you pray, so the company you keep will, will usher you into a type of prayer. So prayer is taught, prayer is caught, and prayer is learned. So until you, you, you achieve this three, your effectiveness in prayer will be affected. So Tuesday, I started teaching on the subject, the secret place of prayer. And that prayer is a secret place. It's a secret place. It's not, it's not a physical place. It's not just a physical place, but it's a secret place 
in the realms of the spirit. So we took our text from Matthew chapter 6, verse number 6. As we prepare for 40 days of power, I'm believing God to prepare you to have a wonderful journey with him. For 40 days in prayer, you must not return the same. You must not just return with the physical blessing, but you must return with spiritual virtues that will be enough for the next one year before 40 days of power. So the Bible said that, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. NLT version. But when you, when you pray, go away by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray to your father in, in private, then your father who sees everything will reward you. Give me the GNT version quickly. He said, but when you pray, go to your room, close the door and pray to who? Your father who is unseen and your father who sees what you do in private will reward you. Give me the message version of this quickly. I love it when I turn the scriptures in different verses. Here is what I want you to do. Find a quiet, secluded place so you won't be tempted to role play before God. Just be there as simple as simply and honestly as you can manage. The focus will shift from you to God and you will begin to sense his grace. The last version, NIV. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will do what? So, prayer is a secret place in the realms of the spirit. When you enter into prayer, you are engaging God alone. It is an interaction, a communication between you and God. So there is no third party in your prayer. You don't pray through your pastor to God. You don't pray through your spiritual mother to God. You don't pray through your biological mother, through your biological father, through whatever. No, no. Prayer is a secret place that is between God and man. So every time you enter into prayer, whether at home or in the church, we may all be praying. We will all be praying, Lord, have mercy. Somebody say, Lord, break through for me. Lord, I want to know you. It's a, everybody has a secret line to God. At the time of prayer, the number you are dialing to God is different from the number I'm dialing to God. It's a secret place where many things happen. God inhabits the secret place of prayer. When you go into prayer, you go and meet God. God is always waiting to hear his people pray to him. So when you enter into prayer, you, that's why he said that so that you don't role play. You don't do other things. When you enter into prayer, you must be conscious that God is in the secret place. I'm still struggling on stage sound, man. Prayer is not just a religious activity. Some pray as though it's a competition. Someone help me on stage. Okay. I always speak in this. Help me on stage. When you enter into prayer, 
you must be conscious that you have a dealing or a business with God. And that God is seated on his throne and he's waiting for you to speak to him and for him to speak back to you. It's not the time where you share your attention with other things. That is why when we are praying, we say, close your eyes. It's not just an instruction. It's for you to shut the door. It's for you to concentrate. It's for you to focus on God. Your attention will move from other things and yourself and you focus on God. So if you are a very prayerful person, you will know the postures of prayer. One of the postures of prayer is to close your eyes. It's not that when you close your eyes, you get answers. But when you close your eyes, you shut your senses from, from assimilating other activities. These are things that we don't teach in church again. And, and people are joining churches and don't understand the sacred posture of prayer. So when you are praying, somebody says, close your eyes and let's pray. You think that the person is instructing you. No, the person is trying to help you so that you will shift your mind. Do you know, okay, if you close your eyes, everybody close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Open your eyes. Did you see something? You didn't see anything. But I sat on the floor and got up. Yes. You didn't see anything. So your mind did not process anything. But immediately you open your eyes and you see me. You are like, hey, pastor. Pastor, Tofomo. Or Yariana. Then you will be praying. But you have lost concentration. So he said, close your door. Enter into the secret place and engage your God. And your God that deals with you in secret will reward you openly. I pray that in 40 days of power, you will learn to dwell in the secret place of prayer. Matthew chapter 6 verse 9. It is in prayer that we establish our relationship with God. It is in the secret place of prayer. Because every one of us have different dealings with God. And God deals with us differently. So in, 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 in our prayer time with him, he knows exactly who you are. He knows exactly what has been happening to you. He knows exactly what has happened to you. He knows exactly the details of your story. And he never confuses it, even if you are identical twins. So in prayer, we, uh, our relationship with our father is established. The Bible said that after this manner, therefore pray ye. Our father which art in heaven. So there is a way we must approach prayer. GNT. There is a way we must approach. Say, this then is how you should pray. It means that there is a way we should pray. So, teachings on prayer is not manipulative. When someone is trying to teach you on prayer, you can't say that it is God that teaches a man how to pray. It's a language of pride. Jesus had to sit them down and teach them how to pray. So, you, can, you may be praying for a long time. Praying for a long time doesn't mean that you know how to pray. You can pray for 16 years and be praying wrongly. You can be an experienced prayer person, but your prayer has amounted to nothing because you don't know how to pray. We must know how to pray. The only issue there is that we may not know what to pray for. But as to how to pray, we must know how to pray. We must know how to communicate to God. But what to pray for at that at a particular time is what we we'll struggle with. But the Spirit of the Lord picks it up and makes intercession for us. So you may be praying for school fees now, 
But the real prayer you should be praying is that your mother should be healed. The real prayer you should be praying is that that pregnant woman should not die. The real prayer you should be praying is that your brother, your sister must not have an accident. So when you begin to speak in tongues, Libra, Kitalua, Mahanti, Kateya, the Holy Spirit picks up your divine communication and goes to intervene and intercede and intercept what should have happened to your relative. So we must know how to pray. On Tuesday, I started very well. And I don't want to go back. I've given you a bit of overview of what I touched on. I also said that the spirit of the Lord, God is everywhere. The presence of God is everywhere. Everywhere on the surface of the earth. The Bible said the earth is the loss and the fullness thereof. And even the people that dwell therein. Everybody on the surface of the earth belongs to God. If even the person is a mermaid, he belongs to God. Because their boss was created by God. And their boss is God's servant. Pharaoh is God's servant. The book of Neza is God's servant. The, the devil is God's servant. So everybody on the surface of the earth, they can refuse not to acknowledge it, but everybody. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, God created the heavens and the earth. Every country belongs to God. Every money belongs to God. Every gold belongs to God. Every diamond belongs to God. So God is everywhere, even in the nightclub, at the football pitch. Wherever you are, God is there. But God does not manifest himself everywhere. He does not. So though, even in the shrine, God is there. So when we are having a service and we are praying, Lord, let, we are praying and asking for God's presence, our, our grammar may be wrong. Because God is already here. What actually you are asking for is the manifest presence of God. So when you are leading prayer, you don't say we are asking for God. God is already here. But that we are giving him an invitation to function in the service. That is the prayer we are praying. That Lord, we want to see you manifest. You himself, oh, but shake yourself. Move. Touch us. Heal us. Because God can be in you and you go and fornicate, but he doesn't react. <laughs> he, if we are going to fornicate, those of you who fornicate, have, have, have you had an experience where you drop your panties and God pulled it up? Shadi <laughs> bakatala. Or you take the alcohol, then the Holy Ghost broke the bottle. But was God there? Are you a child of God? Is the spirit of God dwelling in you? He's there. But the only way we can have God move in the place is when he's worship in truth and in spirit. When he's giving the invitation to have the full cause in our midst. So God is everywhere, but he doesn't manifest himself everywhere. So I thought on the, I started giving the characteristics of the secret place of prayer. The first one I spoke about on Tuesday was that the secret place is the place where God reveals himself and manifests himself to us. The second thing I'll deal with in this service is that the secret place, you see, I, I, I don't like preaching on prayer, but I think that I must start teaching on prayer. I must start teaching on prayer to help. I fear the generation coming up. And I'm thinking about the next one. Because it looks like everything is being watered down gradually from all angles. It's being watered down to the next and next and next generation. And it will take a few remnants who will still preach the raw word and believe God that one or two. Because one day, Katrikoma went for a crusade. And it was, it was said that it was only Benihim that gave his life to Christ. And look at the work that Benahim did. So sometimes it's not about how many people repented, but who repented. So we have to trust God that certain things, you see those days, some of you, you were even afraid holding phone in prayer. But now, whilst you are praying, you're on your phone. It, it, it speaks a lot about your reverential fear for God. Those days when you were late for church, you used to run like your heart beats. But now, when you are late for church, you don't even, you don't feel like you owe anybody. It's a sign. 
that something is happening to your heart. Your heart is becoming calcified. It's becoming hard. A hardened heart is not a criminal. A hardened heart is a disobedient, a disloyal, a, a, a child of God who doesn't fear God again. That type of heart is what we call a hardened heart. No, you see, when you say a hardened heart, you think some. Bang, bang. Yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> a hardened heart is that heart that does not obey God again. That does not fear God again. So I'm going to teach on prayer. Maybe I'll take another subject called the house of prayer. Maybe next month or something. Trust God that I won't change it because you know me. I'll say I'll teach them before, I, before I, I've come to stand in the spirit of holiness. It becomes something else. So today we are dealing with the subject or the point. The second point is the secret place is the place where we come to know God. The place of prayer is the place we get to know God. I remember saying that a Christian who will become a disciple must be a prayerful person. When prayer is missing in the life of the believer, he or she can never become a strong disciple and even a strong Christian. A prayerless Christian cannot graduate to become a disciple because disciples are Christians who have put themselves under the instruction of God's word committed to obeying God's word. Not every believer is a disciple. That was why when you read, that's why when you read the Bible, there is a difference. Some, the Bible said multitudes. They were the followers. They followed Christ. And then when the Bible is talking about the disciple, you see clearly a disciple of Christ. They may not be part of the 12 disciples, but there were some that the Bible referred to as a disciple of Christ. So if you want to be a strong Christian, you must learn how to pray often. So Paul said that I wish that all men pray everywhere. Pray. Prayer will let you know God. And I look through prayer topics every year. You know, every year I pick your prayer topics. And I do, I do statistics with it. So when you see me preaching certain messages, it's based on the highest request in a particular area. So I pick it and I start teaching. Because if God will work for you, he'll work through his word. So as I teach, I'm believing God that you will know that God is answering your prayer request. So when I look through the prayer request, I see a lot of you in 2022. I really want to know God. I want to get closer to God. I want to love God. If you want to love God, you must love the secret place of prayer. It is in the secret place of prayer that you begin to know God. No, you see, and prayer, eh, Jesus, help me. Prayer, the quality of a prayer is not based on how nice, how dirty, how glorious the prayer content looks like. Do you understand what I should explain? Who wants me to explain? Let me see. You are understood? Okay. So, the kind of prayer I'm talking about, or what I'm talking about is that, okay, so let's say I'm praying and I'm asking God, God, I'm asking you, Lord, turn the heart of people in the community to you. Let them love you. Let them surrender to you. Lord, cause your heavens to be open. We split open the heavens. Then another person comes to pray. Lord, I pray that Lord, you help me you help me. I've been too dirty. I've done, I'm, 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 I'm fornicating too much. I'm tired. I've come to you. I've asked you for forgiveness. Still, I go back to do it. I'm tired. I want to do this. I want to do that. I've committed too many abortions. Lord, you see, there, there are two prayers. Eh? One looks nice and one looks dirty. But the quality, the way God weighs it, is not whether it is nice or it is dirty. God weighs it with his own parameters. 
It is in prayer time that you know the different shades of your God. And the more you get to know the different shades of your God, the more you will fall in love with him. Some people know God with one side. He's my father. Or he's my healer. Or he's my provider. But when you frequent the place of prayer always, you will see God manifest. That is why he has the Nigerians can give him so many names. The Hebrews gave him so many names. Where the Gans, every tribe has so many names for God. Atanyanumo. What again? They have different names. If you go, if you go to account, different because as you encounter God, you try to describe Him because God is not. It is He is not. He is He is not finite. God is infinite. So your our encounters with Him makes us describe him the way we got to know him. When you enter into prayer often, in your time of prayer, God reveals himself to you. You get to know God. You get to know him. You get to, you know, I, you see, one day I was watching, I was in the service. You see, sometimes you, as, as a man of God, when you're going to preach, you pray into the service. And then God can show you something. That a certain woman will come and sit on the right side. And this will be her issue. And sometimes God can even show you the dress the person will wear. And you write it down. That's why I like this pulpit because a lot of things are here you can't see. So you write it down. And then you'll be, as you are preaching, you'll be watching. Sometimes the people will come late. But you see them and say, oh God. The next time you go into prayer and God shows you another thing, will you believe it or not? believe God. You come to know that God is truly an honest man. In him there is no shadow of turning. You see, when you pray often, you will get to know God. Prayer in the secret place of prayer. Do you know that that is why a wife knows the husband more than even his best friends. Because they always have secrets. They share together every day. There are secrets. There are some wives who have caught their husbands with other women, but they kept it. They've kept it a secret. They've forgiven their husbands, and it is between them alone. So never fool yourself thinking that you know somebody's wife more than him. It is when you enter into the secret place of prayer, you get to know your God. It is there. Many of us don't go into that secret place. We don't pray to God. We pray to God like everybody's listening to you. In prayer, you are talking to God. Don't pray like everybody's listening to you. So you want to pray an impressive prayer. No. God will just be laughing at you. He is comfortable there. You come with your big grammar. And you're, he, will, he will just be smiling because he knows that you are doing joy in prayer. You have to know that when you enter into prayer, you are in the secret place with your father. He said, close the door and speak to him. He that is in secret, he will answer you in public. In, it is in the secret place of prayer that a man gets to know God. A Christian who does not pray will never know God for himself. Many people get offended in God because they don't know God. Yes. There are many people who get offended with God and with church because they don't know God for themselves. They heard that God is like this. They heard that God is a provider. They heard that God can heal. So, because they heard that God can heal, they are coming to church for their healing. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. But they have to know there is another side of God that he can pick on you. Bless. He will go and showcase you to the devil. Devil. Have you seen my daughter? Bless. She's blessed. Then the devil say, she's blessed and happy because you've given her everything. God will say, no, it's not true. So whilst you are walking there, God is bragging with you and has thrown you into a competition. That 
is another side of God. But if you don't go into the secret place of prayer and then blessed begins to go through trials and temptations and tribulations, you will see that because she does not know God, that God can pass you through fires. The Bible said about Joseph, before his word came, the word of the Lord tried him. You have to know God. And the only way you can know God is to frequent the secret place of prayer in the morning. That is why we put the morning devotions at 4.30 a.m. Constant prayer. What you are doing is you are raising an altar in your home, in your life. After that, 30 minutes, you and your God if you diligently follow this by seven years time, you will become a very solid person in the faith. Because you see many seeds of God. Prayer reveals God to you. And prayer makes you know God. Like you know God and you know God. So, you see, the way a pastor must know God isn't the same way a Christian will know God. The way a church worker must know God should not be the same as the way an ordinary Christian should know God. The reason is not because the pastor has more advantage. No. The reason is not because the church worker has more advantage. No. The reason is that you need to know God for yourself because you will be in the front line of battle. And if you don't know the God that sent you to work for him, what are you going to do there? So a, Christ, a, a church worker who does not pray is, is, is likely to backslide soon. Because the work of God, a pastor who does not pray, he will, he will give up. Because the work of God, just when you think that the cake is almost prepared, then the egg will decide to leave. So you have to go and look for another egg and then get it into the cake. And You see, when you are working for God or you are waiting on God, many things will go on. But you must know. You see, Paul says that I am persuaded. I'm fully persuaded. I know whom I have believed. I know. If your heart desire is to know God, then I'm calling you to the place of prayer in 40 days of power. Where you will diligently, earnestly, sincerely engage God at your level of prayer. Maybe we'll be fasting six to six. You can't do six to six. Don't kill yourself. You can honestly do six to three. Do it. You can honestly do six to twelve. And you know that you have sanctified that period. It's better to do six to twelve for 40 days than to do six to six for three days and stop. The walk in the spirit is a walk of honesty. And not pretense and competition and trying to measure ourselves with one another. If you have to grow in the spirit, you must be an honest child of God. Walk with God at your level. Start where you are. And God who is not a God of partiality will meet you at the point of your need. Can I hear a big amen? God's presence manifests to us in the secret place of prayer and it is there we get to know him. It is God's desire that we, his children, will get to know him. God's knowledge is not shielded, it's not shrouded, it's not a, a, a reserve for a, a preserve or whatever. It, it is not kept for a certain unique children of God. God's knowledge is available for anyone who seeks Anyone who desires it, anyone who pursues to know God, it is available. There are pastors who don't know more than their members. One day, 
a young pastor called me and said that there's, an, there's a woman in his church. She has been challenging him on scripture. <laughs> when she, he preaches, then the woman will come. Pastor, the way you were talking about this scripture, then he, she will teach him. That's okay. The next time she talks to you like that, keep the record. I want to hear the content of your uh, convo. Uh-huh. But don't fight her. Listen, maybe she's teaching you something. So the next time they met, they spoke about the miracle at Canaan. And the way the guy told me how the woman said it, I said, bro, it is better you don't take a defensive stand. You can see that this woman has been in the law for over 30 years. So anytime she comes to speak to you, don't defend yourself. Just tell her that, okay, this is another dimension of the scripture I didn't know. I will go and study and get much light on it. There's no need to fight. I don't like that. If you come to me and tell me something, I will tell you that it's a dimension of the word. I'm yet to know. So one day when I get to know God and he shows me that dimension, hallelujah. But there are dimensions of the word that you can never know. Because it's not every mystery that is committed to everyone. Hallelujah. We have to get to know God. We, else, some of you, eh, people will let you go and pray at cemetery. Eh, because you went to tell them, eh, my mom was supposed to write something for me. And just one week before she was going to write, and then they did her something. She went to the hometown, and they struck her with stroke, and three days she died. So there's something my mother did not give to me. Then the prophet will say, young compire. Let's go to the cemetery. Foolish talk. Let's go to the cemetery. When God has given you a sanctuary, you want to go to cemetery. Then you go. Then you go and cry. They, 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 they go around it, lie on it. One day when you go, your mother will grab you inside and close it. <laughs> you lie on it and be quiet. Be quiet. Hold your breath. 30 seconds. Release it. Hold your breath. 30 seconds. The next time you hold your breath, it will hold you. <laughs> it is so sad. We do everything in the name of spirituality. And sometimes we are rather initiating ourselves into courts we never know. You never know that you have entered into a, a, a court. Then you see things will be happening. You are dreaming. You are swimming here. You are doing this. You are sleeping with dogs. You are sleeping with goats and all that. Because you went and engaged a familiar spirit and not the spirit of God. And they all have manifestation. Remember, the Egyptians, the magicians of Pharaoh, their sticks also manifested. So their sticks also turned into snake. Okay? It's all, it, 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 it turns into snake. So the manifestation, if you don't have a spirit that knows God, you will not know the difference. Moses' rod can manifest. The magician's rod can also manifest. But you need the spirit of the Lord to discern. It's not about how a man of God is dressed. It's about what his source is. And you must know God. The reason many are being deceived is that many of us do not know God beyond our Savior. It is in the secret place of prayer that we get to know God. We get to know God. And when you get to know God, all the other things force in place. You will not be forced to do what you are supposed to do. You will not be forced. Because the more you know God, the more you want to know him. Haven't you realized that anytime you are studying the Bible, you get to know that you don't know anything in the Bible. You will be wondering, ah, is it not the same Bible I read? Or you read the same verse, you came to church and pastor is preaching. And it's like, hey, is that the verse? 
So what was in my mind? What was I seeing? There is so much of our God that is beyond shoes, marriage, children, and whatever. There, we have to know our God. Because sometimes, assuming you get a job in Qatar for 10 years, you don't go to church. What will become of you? I say, guys, I know what you say. You have to know God. You see, it's nice when we quote Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These were Hebrew people. They knew their souls. They knew who they were. They knew their God. It's not just quoting those scriptures. That's why I'm not impressed when you just quote scripture. I want you to live the scripture. I, God wants us to live the scripture. They knew their God that la lie, we would not bow. If God does, our God will save us. We know that. And there's another side of him that we are convinced of. If even he does not save us in this matter, it will not be the reason why we will deny our faith in him. We must get to know God and stop playing God. But get to know God and stop playing church. Get to know God and stop playing religiosity. Get, and that it, it, it takes the secret place. Show me a man who faces the secret place. I will show you a man who knows God. So when you come and tell me you're a prayer warrior and you don't know God, and when you were praying, the, uh, the Spirit of the Lord told you, I should go to my hometown and take a son in my house. And take it to the lagoon. I was like, something's wrong with you. Oh, but down back. Something's wrong with you. The spirit of the Lord bears witness in us that we are children of God. You need to know God, else you can easily be deceived. You can easily be deceived. And when you see people being deceived on the airways, I can come and give you a very nice. You see, you can, I, 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 a, 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 a pastor can share a very nice testimony and add some things. Be. I know people who play games and I know people who see miracles, true testimonies. How will you know when your spirit a, doesn't know God? When your spirit does not go know God. The walk in Christianity is all about levels of knowledge in God. And if you want to know God, as you wrote in your prayer request, and maybe if you know you are not just acting, but you really mean it, you need to go to the place of prayer. When you go to the place of prayer, God shows you things. I remember when I got married for the first four months, seven months. My wife was not conceiving. So we started this same thing called spiritual emphasis. 30 days. Those days were 30 days. On the seventh day in prayer, I saw my firstborn in a vision at the age of four years. When I woke up, I told my wife, you are pregnant. She said, hey. I said, you are pregnant. 8 August that year. She I said, go and test. She was positive. God will show you things if you go to the secret place. God will empower your spirit. You will get to me. God. God is a miracle worker. God is a leader. God can lead you in life. He leads us through the path of righteousness. God can lead you. How will you know that God can lead you if you don't engage God in prayer? We must take 40 days of power serious. We must go into the place of prayer. Come into the place of prayer. Be in the place of prayer. Keep an atmosphere that can give you sensitivity to the spirit of the Lord. It's not that we are saying, don't listen to this song. Don't li when you get to know God, you know which song to listen to. <laughs> now you don't understand. But when we get to know God, Songs that don't create atmosphere. The song you are listening to, will it let you hear that say the Lord? 
the song you are listening to, when it puts you in a happy mood, will you say glory be to God? Do you want to fast and hear from God? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, you see, let us take God serious and take the things of God serious in all our swagging. God is an unchanging changer. He doesn't change. His value is the same yesterday, today, and forever. In the secret place of prayer, you get to know God and God will help you to know him. That is the beauty of God. He helps us to know him because by our own effort, our carnal mind cannot receive from the Lord. We get to know him by his spirit. I end with John chapter 17 verse 3. You see how God, what God is expecting. He said, and this is life eternal, that they might know thee, the only true God. There are many gods, but the only true God is known through Christ. God wants us to know him. No matter who you are, no matter how long you've walked with him, there are depths in God. There are heights in God. There are faces in God we don't know, and it takes prayer. Ligo shagadaba. Lord, I want to know you. Moses had, had, had encounters with God, but when God said, move, he said, we are not moving. We are not moving because he knows God. When you go into, you see, when God was having an interaction with Moses, it was in the secret place. He said, put your hand in your dress, remove it, it becomes quieter. Put his back. No lab. No medication, no doctor, no nurse, no consultancy. If you get leprosy, they have to take you to somewhere, leprosodium or whatever. You alone because you are infectious. God said, put it back again. Bring it back. His hand was back. You think that Aaron will know God more than Moses? No. In the secret place of prayer, we get to know God. I want you to rise up on your feet and let's pray. We want to pray. You want to lift your voice and pray the Lord as we enter into 40 days of power. Lord, take us to the place of prayer. Take us to the secret place of prayer. Let me have a desire. Let me have a grace. Let me have a strength. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Benda kese kete bekabala, rakata la baba shambele kete, le kata la baba shada la baba. Lift your voice and pray the Lord. I want to stay in the secret place of prayer. Le kasuta pre kasata, balagra kase katele bakala, re kata la baba baba shada la baba, re kese tele ba. Spirit of God, re kabala ba. Create a hunger, create a test, create a desire. Re katali masoa, pale kasata ba, makota bayasa, pale kresete ba, mandolo bosapa. Ima la na maya kata, baye kasa ya na ba, re kabala da ba ya, asamdele me kabe ya, rako na ba senda, palanga diwa kasa ya, e andele masoya ta, ampolo kusama, palade masandele ya, rakata la mama ya, e madoshita, pale kesete ya, Marianda ketela, Rabaloga kasanda, somebody pray the Lord, let me have a desire, oh rada na ba. Ida la mama mayanda, Rosata la baba baba, Ida la baba. Every knowledge of God draws you closer to Him because you get to know Him. That God is love, and everybody, my grace towards love. You want to pray the Lord as we enter into forty days of power. I want to know You. I want to know You. I want to know You. La baya sata. Le baka sata la baba baba. 
The Lord will reveal himself to us. The Lord will lead us. The Lord will love, will manifest his love towards us. The goodness of God will be showered on us. Somebody pray. The Lord, I will get to know you. Reka so male kata, male ko so toba, malate kasata ya, araba na ba 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 ba, reba na ba ba ye kata. Oh Lord, I know I have backslidden. Lord, I know I have withdrawn from Your presence. In I pray, the Lord, as we start the forty days of power, Lord, let it be my place, my secret place of revival. Let it be my secret place of restoration. Let it be my secret place of return. He has told of a shadala. Baptize me, O Lord, with the spirit of prayer. Baptize me, O Lord, with the mantles of prayer. Baptize me, O Lord, with the anointing to stay in the secret place of prayer. In the name of Jesus, He has told of a Sabbath. Dale me que se te yas. Set me on fire with eternal fires into prayer in the name of Jesus. It's not by my, it's not my power, but by my spirit. Say the Lord, as we enter into fasting and prayer, Lord, we don't do it with our own strength. We ask for your grace. We ask for the supply of the spirit of supplication. We ask for the supply of the spirit of grace and supplication in the mighty name of Jesus. We will not return the same. We will not return the same. He end the Messiah when Elijah crossed the river Jordan with Elijah. He did not return the same. You want to pray that at the end of 40 days of power, you will not be the same again. Your life will not be the same again. Your health will not be the same again. Your spiritual authority will not be the same again. Something will change about you. Your lost access will be found. Keys will be released. Ladders will be released. We end the Lebashaya. May the Lord step a hunger and a thirst in our spirit to seek his face, to ask, to seek, and to knock. Maleko Pashataka. Hey, Katala Baba Baba. Receive the grace to stay in prayer. Receive the grace to remain on the mountain of prayer. Every revelation of God you receive attracts you to God. I pray in over your life. I pray in the name of Jesus that in 40 days of power we shall receive revelations. The Lord will speak to us. The Lord will speak to us. The Lord will speak to us. Hey, the Lord will show us. We shall dream dreams and we shall see visions. In the Messiah. Somebody pray. In two, three minutes more, pray. I want us to pray. The Lord in 40 days of power. Show me. Show me your glory. Show me your glory. Sandala Mayata. Katala Baba Banana Mama. Katala Babea. And whoever show us your glory. Let your glory be multiplied for the glory of the Lord will be risen upon us. We decree and then the Messiah he shall be risen upon us in the name of Jesus. We will see the glory of the Lord manifest we will not return the same. We will not empty. We will not return empty. We will not encounter God. No man encounters God and returns the same. The burning bush encounter changed Moses. Oh, these 40 days of power. It is our burning bush encounter as a people, as individuals, as a church, as a family. 40 days of power. 
is our burning bush encounter with God. We will not remain the same. We decree and declare the abundance of the Lord. We will arise in power. Yet the Messiah, impossibility will become possible. Barry wounds will receive life. Dead bodies will receive life. Sick bodies will receive healing. Troubled lives will receive soundness and peace. There will be a flow of God's power, of God's manifest presence. The Lord will manifest Himself in our midst, in our prayers, in the name of Jesus. Libra Casata, miracles, signs and wonders, breakthroughs, open doors, open heavens, transformation, yokes will be broken, addictions to pornography will be broken, addictions to drink. Addictions to drugs, addictions to sin will be broken. In the name of Jesus, there will be liberation, there will be deliverances all over the place. In the name of Jesus, Yekesete Kete, Libra Kata, Palaka Teleba, Apiria Tunamaha, Eira Balababaya. We will swim in power, we will walk in power, we will run in power for they that wait upon the Lord. Isaiah chapter 40, verse 29. They shall renew their strength. Leba Katala in the Lima Udia. Hey, Katale Mazoa. Our strength shall be renewed in the name of Jesus. Yatele Masaba. Our glories shall be renewed. Enough is enough. The famine will be over. The pain will be over. The shame will be over. The glory of the Lord, the camels of Lebanon, the camels of Egypt, they shall carry our gold and silver. Unemployment will come to an end. Poverty will be arrested forever. There will be life in this house. There will be life in your life. The strength of the Lord will manifest in our lives in the day. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Much less love and is all we ask for Lord. as we enter into a period of fasting and prayer as Paul prayed for the church in Ephesus that the eyes of the understanding be open that they will get to know Father as we enter into 40 days of power and prepare ourselves to climb the prayer mountain and seek your face and look into your face if there is any blessing you have for us we ask that after 40 days of power our intimate relationship with you will be upgraded I thought you would say amen that our closeness to you, our knowledge of you, will never be the same again. We desire you, we yearn for you, our heart pants for you, as we step into 40 days of power. A time you have called for consecration and intimacy we pray that our lives will never be the same again. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Give the Lord a mighty clap offering. I pray that as we enter into 40 days of power from 23rd, 
you will really engage God in private and in public. That we will seek the face of God. That after 40 days of power, we will know that God has encountered us and we have also encountered God. Amen. Please give God another clap offering.